What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those you're out there who maybe need to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there who try a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of you to sign for guys we're going to take a look at the yellow submarine Real of La Liga in Spain of course under charge of Unai Emery and what a fantastic job the Spaniard has done in his short tenure so far with Real. Europa League winners last season and this year in the Champions League did anyone see them get into the Final Four? Knocking out Juve and Bayern Munich on their way to doing it. Now Liverpool away in the Champions League semi-finals. You can make fun of Unai Emery's good evenings, but you can't make fun of his good evenings in Europe this season. How was that? Pretty rubbish joke, right? But even so, uh, Villarreal is such a good team, right? And I think they're a sort of they're a side that slip under the radar, if you know what I mean. Like not everyone understands just how good this Villarreal team is. Emery's really got them playing well. They've made some smart signings over recent years and I tell you what man this side has got deceptive depth for days I mean seriously you know even I didn't realize just how thick Villarreal squad is thicker than Megan Stallion man this is a really deep squad and a really class one too but Villarreal are a great team to do a La Liga career mode with in this year's FIFA and I'll tell you why not only have you got Champions League football and you're playing one of the top leagues in Europe but you got some very tough objectives in Season 1. A small budget and an ageing side that needs a bit of a rebuild as well. Yet yeah, really good challenge for Uriel. Asked to finish in the top four in La Liga in the first season. Very tough to do because you know that three spots are pretty much guaranteed to go to Barca, Real and also Atletico as well. So really, it's only one spot up for grabs or so you'd assume. Two at the absolute most if one of those three falter. In the Copa del Rey reached the last 16. That's definitely doable. But the Champions League getting to the quarterfinals. Now they've gone one round further in the real life. So in the real life, in real life this year. But it's still a very tough objective when you consider some of the blockbuster teams they'll be up against. Even getting through in the group with Manchester United, Atalanta and Young Boys is not an easy task for the yellow submarine. So taking over with Villarreal and Unai Emery. You saw the team there. It's a four and a half star team. And it's a really good team as well. And I made the joke there that this squad is a really uh, thick squad it's got a lot of depth but there's some truth to what I was saying I mean it really is fantastic you've got so many players that are in the mid to high 70s that are in the reserves and can't get on the bench right now because there are so many players ahead of them in the pecking order Villarreal have got an abundance of full backs and wingers in this team playing down the flank is clearly important to Unai Emery and you would have seen he had several players that deals that come at the end of the year I wouldn't give a new contract to any of them. Let them go and begin the rebuild at Villarreal. Uh, we sold uh, Alberto Moreno, uh, funnily enough, former Liverpool left back here uh, to Sporting Lisbon for £9.5 million. We also negotiated a deal for uh, Raul Albiol, the former Real Madrid centre-half. We negotiated a deal for Peña to Liverpool as well as we're going to sell the veteran Albiol to Real Sociedad. Albiol is 82 overall. He's one of the highest rated players you've got in the Villarreal side but this guy's a vet he's 35 years old and at the end of the day he is going to decrease rapidly this guy's decline is going to be incredibly steep you got to sell him in the first window because he is going to be sub 80 overall in the first few months but as for new signings with Villarreal well I mentioned earlier there's a lot of depth to this team and playing down the flanks is really important to Villarreal I would recommend a new right back, even though they've got Serge Aurier, Mario Gaspard, a long serving right back, uh, Pena, who we're going to sign, uh, sell to Liverpool as well. But I would sign a new right back, and I recommend this guy to everyone playing FIFA Career Mode this year. He really is probably my favourite right back in the game, or certainly up there. It's Masraoui of Ajax, the Moroccan international. The reason I recommend him, very simple. He's playing for Ajax right now, 23 years old, already 82 overall, with 86 potential, and he's out of contract 
at the end of the season. So you can get him for under the valuation. We snapped him up for 31 mil, and that's an absolute bargain. The only concern with Masraoui is the reasonably low strength and the low defensive work rate, but because of development plans now in FIFA, that's not a major concern. Put him on a defensive work uh, wide back development plan that will train the defensive work rate up from low to high. He's very, very quick. Get him a little bit stronger and a little bit better on the defensive end. He's going to be your starting right back for all the years you're with Villarreal. Uh, so we sold out the old to Sociedad. Alberto Moreno is off to Portugal to play for Sporting Lisbon. We did sell Peña to Liverpool as well, which I thought was a really interesting sale. The two meeting in the Champions League in the semi-finals this season. So three quick sales there. And we had a bit for Sergio Rier as well, the former Spurs right back. Again, Villarreal have an abundance of fullbacks, but you will notice they're all pretty old apart from the uh, South American left back they've got. But Sergio Rier, the Ivorian, he's a solid defender, but at 29 years old, you can get better and you can get younger as well. We've already done that with Mads Rowley. If you can sell him for 14 and a quarter mil, that's what we got for his sale to buy in here. Definitely worth doing. He's not a bad squad right back to have, but personally, I'd cash in and look for someone younger as a backup for Maz Rowley, who's uh, going to be uh, on cheaper wages as well, because Maz Rowley will be your first choice for all the years you're with Villarreal. Uh, we also signed this guy from Valencia as well. Like I said, with Villarreal, they've got a lot of aging players in this team, and there's so much depth to it, but you do want to bring in some younger players to develop for the future, but players that aren't too young and still have a good starting overall. Maz Rowley, 23 years old, is 82 overall, so he goes straight in the first team, as does this guy, Carlos Soler of Valencia, 24-year-old, 81-rated midfielder playing in a style right now. You can get him on a really cheap contract, and whilst you will have to pay around 40 to 45 million to get him, this guy's a class midfielder, man. Honestly, he'd fit in anywhere. He's a jack of all trades. I love those jack of all trades players, and Soler is that type of guy. Very little orange, very little red in the stats, mostly green, and a few yellows as well. Soler can do anything. He can sit deeper, he can play on the flank, he can play further forward, or he can play Play right through the heart of the team. He really can do anything. Four-star weak foot, jack of all trades, the perfect box-to-box -box alongside, well, in my opinion, one of the most underrated players in the past decade. Is that a stretch for me to say that? Parejo, one of the most underrated players in the past decade? I don't think so. I think he's been criminally underrated for his time uh, in La Liga. Even so, uh, we changed the position from Juan Foyth as well, the former Spurs defender. Uh, I think I forgot to show you this, but I changed his position at the start of the save from right back to centre half. Now, he starts off as a right back, but to me, he's better as a centre half. If you change his position, it'll only take two weeks, and you would have seen he grew to 79 overall because of the position change alone. Uh, a sign of whether a player is suited to play in a different position is just how quickly it will take him to learn the new position. If it only takes two weeks, you know he's better suited to that role, just like Juan Foyth is. So right back he's a solid defensive fullback but as a centre half he's better there he's tall he's strong he's defensively really solid I'd retrain him to centre half to, uh, to fill in for Raul Albiol who we sold to Real Sociedad and we negotiated a deal for Ibora to Porto and also had a bit for Mario Gaspar as well this one was kind of sad man 30 years old 79 rated a right back like I said Villarreal an abundance of fullbacks we were looking to sell them all I didn't put him on the transfer list but I wouldn't be against letting him go if you don't want to sell him that's fine but if you do get a bid don't be afraid to cash in I know he's been at Villarreal for throughout his entire career in pro football, but he's now 30 years old, 79 rated. He's a solid, solid, reliable fullback. Mr. Consistent in this Villarreal team, if you will, and club captain as well. But if you can get around 17 mil for him, which we did from Juventus, I wouldn't be adverse to letting him go. I know it'll be painful. I know it'll be harsh. He's done nothing wrong and been there for his entire career, captain of the club. But again, at 30 years old, he's due to decline in the first season. You've already got Maz Rowley. He's not going to be first choice. And you might want a younger right back for the future as well. So we also sold Ibora as well for £9 million to Real Betis as well. You'll see spoilers that the Porto deal fell through. He did go to Real Betis. And Gaspar would indeed lead to Juventus as Arsenal. Wouldn't match the amount of money. Uh, that you they were willing to put in. So we sold Ibora at 33 years old and Mario Gaspar to Juve as well. Two reasonably good sales there, I'd say, for the players that are in their 30s right now. Gaspar again, 79 overall, solid right back to have, but you can get a little bit younger and someone for the future. And this is the guy I would recommend.
recommend as well. Well, there's a few names I'd recommend, but this guy will be the best value for money signing, if you will. Um, it's Mingueza of Barcelona, obviously with Xavi's rebuild, if you will, in real life at Barcelona. He might well have some plans for this guy for the future, but you can get him for quite a cheap deal in the game of his valuation of £9 million. In the end, I decided to do things a little bit differently. I swapped them Etienne Capu because they were interested in the former Watford midfielder who I just couldn't get any bids for, so I gave him to Barca for half a mil uh, plus, um, sorry, gave him to Barca plus half a mil for Mingueza. And this guy, as you'll notice, is actually a centre-back, but I'd pull a reverse Juan Foyf with this guy. We trained Foyf from right-back to centre-back. I'll train this guy from centre-back to right-back. He's got right-back as a secondary position. Defensively, he's really solid, and he's not too slow either. He's got a little bit of pace about him. Got some decent dribbling and ball control stats as well. Centre-back or right-back, really at six foot, this guy could do either role, no doubt about it. He's, he could easily fill in as a centre-half or a right-back, really, wherever you fancy him. But as a utility man, Man. I quite like him as a, a player that can do all three, right back, left back and centre back. So freestyle weak foot's not bad either. Again, he's got a bit of pace, he's got some good stamina, got some decent uh, ball control and dribbling stats. I'd personally convert him to right back. Um, as you'll see, we also decided to sell Mandy as well, the Algerian Barry Manlow, not too happy about this, but 29 years old, 79 rated. My jokes today are awful. 79 rated. Again, like Gaspar, like Aurier, like Moreno. These are really good players in the mid to high 70s, but you can get better and you can get younger. Mandy at 79 overall. is only going to get worse at 29 years old and you can get someone to replace him. He's better now and better for the future as well. The player I'd recommend is this guy right here. After selling Mandy to Atalanta, we signed Zubeldia from Real Sociedad. Uh, 24 years old, 80 rated. So he's approaching the prime of his career right now, and you can get him for just over the valuation. I think he spent 24 million, 24.5 million for Zubeldia. That's an absolute bargain from Real Sociedad. This guy still got his prime years ahead of him, and at 80 overall, he grows a few more ratings to 84 overall when it's all said and done with dynamic potential. Could get into the mid to high 80s. Really solid centre half. You'll notice with Zubeldia as well. I like those utility players, and this guy could also play further forward as well as centre half as well. That is his primary position at 5 foot 11. He's not the tallest, but he can play in your back line as a centre half. And again, you'll notice he can play further through the middle as well with some really, really good passing stats. This guy is a fantastic passer of the ball. So you could have him as an anchor man in his team, as a defensive midfielder, or playing centre half. 80 jumping means at 5 foot 11 shouldn't be too much of a negative for you. And again, I personally will play him centre half in this team alongside Pau Torres as a really solid young defender for Villarreal. Uh, so he's uh, changed position from Mingueza to right back. Only took him two weeks. No overall increase, but again, with the stats he's got, he could play right back or centre back in this team. The choice is yours. I personally, with the pace he's got and some decent offensive and passing stats as well, would retrain him as a wing back in this team. And after the season ticket money came in, we had around £23.5 million pounds to work with right before the start of the season. And we had just about enough money for one more sign. And the guy I decided to pick up from Espanyol, Javier Puado. You might have heard of this guy. Really talented young winger. Just 23 years old. 78 overall. Um, Espanyol stalled on my initial bid of just over 20 mil. But you'll see afterwards we managed to negotiate a deal for the young left midfielder. I had a bit for Sergio Asenjo and, and more on this in just a moment's time. There wasn't enough time for me to sell him to Sheffield United because I had my replacement lined up but I couldn't negotiate a deal on time uh, for the veteran Spaniard. But as you'll see with Puado, uh, we signed him for, I think it was 20 point, yeah, 20.5 million pounds, so a million and a half over the valuation. That's a bargain for Javier. In his early 20s, 78 overall means he'll go right into the first 11, and he's got 84 potential as well on a really low weekly wage too. So yeah, Puado became my final signing of the episode and the transfer window with Villarreal, and he's a class young winger to have. Villarreal have got so many great wingers in their team. I mean, they've got such an awesome amount of young talent on the flanks in this team. But adding Puado to it just means you've got even more depth in that position, in that role. And as an inverted wide midfielder, this guy's going to be a class inside four for the years you're at via Real. So I'll put him straight in the first 11 and maximise potential with the pace and the skills and the agility this guy's got. So the final signing I tried to pull off but failed with spoilers was this guy right here. Robert Sanchez of Brighton. Really good young goalkeeper. But I just didn't have the money to pull it off. Brighton were willing to take Sergio Asenjo off my hands, plus a bit of money, but I couldn't negotiate a deal with Graham Potter. Asenjo's free rating's higher, yes, but... 
uh, Sanchez is far, far younger, almost a decade younger than the Spaniard Asenjo, but I just couldn't pull the deal off. Would have been a good swap deal too, because Asenjo is only going to get worse, whereas Sanchez has 83 potential, but sadly couldn't, put a, uh, couldn't pull the deal off, and that meant we had to end the window there. So with Villarreal, after rebuilding the squad in the summer, out with the old, in with the young, we sold seven players for a whopping 93 and a quarter million pounds and signed five players for 114 and a half. So to be fair, the net loss in the summer window wasn't very steep at all. Totally, we only lost 21 and a quarter mil in the net loss. That's that's a really good transfer window. When you look at the players that came in, five players, four of which being Spanish for the core, in Soler, Poado, Zubeldia, and Mingueza. Only one player was non-Spanish. That was Masraoui with 86 potential. Soler has 86. Poado and Zubeldia with 84. And Mingueza with 82. We made the squad younger. We've gotten rid of some of the aging players here. And we've got a really thick squad still for this season. So the question was, can we hear average objectives of finishing in the top four and the quarterfinals, the Copa del Rey and the Champions League as well. Well, as you can see, as we simulate the end of the season, there was no European final. And I wondered whether we'd made it out of the group. Well, as we ended the season, we did see there was a great lead campaign for Villarreal in the first year. I talked about there's only ever one spot available in the La Liga uh, table for Champions League football because you know that Real Madrid, Barca and Atletico and get, get three of those four spots. And we finish in second, two points beyond the eventual winners, Real Madrid with 79 points. So a really solid first season. Not only do we get into the top four like the board asked us to, but finished runners-up. That is an absolutely brilliant season to finish ahead of Atletico and Barcelona as well in season one with Villarreal. Personally speaking, I don't think if you miss out the top four, it'll be a major blow in the very first season with Villarreal. Even Europa League will be good enough, but if you can get into the top four, that's a good achievement in my book and especially to be runners-up as well. As for the other competitions, we won the Super Cup at the start of the season, you might have noticed it, but it doesn't count towards the objectives. Thought I'd show you it anyway. But as for the Copa del Rey, this was the failure objective. We got knocked out by Barcelona in the last 32. Asked to reach the quarterfinals, we got knocked out two rounds fewer, but no shame in getting knocked out by Shawi's Barcelona. But as for the Champions League, we made it for our group, runners up to Manchester United, and in a round of 16... Knocked out Unai Emery's former team, Paris Saint-Germain. How about that? One night in Paris, made it through to the quarters, but unfortunately went no further. Benfica beats us on penalties. Heartbreaking loss there in the last state of the Champions League. Couldn't get to the semis like in real life, but it's still a success for the board. We failed our cup objective, yes, but no shame in getting knocked out by Barcelona. But in the Champions League, asked to reach the quarterfinals, we did that. In La Liga, asked to finish in the top four, we did that. So for season one, one failure, but two successes, and I will call that a really solid and very impressive first season with Villarreal. Runners up in La Liga, only getting knocked out of the cup by a great Barcelona team. And for the Champions League, reaching the last eight as well, only to get knocked out on penalties too. That's a solid first season. And for Villarreal as well, this is such a fun team to do a career mode with. Like I said at the start of the episode here, it's just a perfect La Liga team to use. They've got lovely kits, the yellow submarine stadium. I, I, I love the team. There's some great young talent in here. None better than Pau Torres, of course. What a fabulous young defender he is. Estu Pinan, uh, the young fullback as well. Juan Foyfu, like I mentioned, I would convert to centre-half. And the wingers they've got as well. This is a really good Villarreal side. They're deceptively good. They're a team that, like I mentioned earlier, slide under the radar, if you will. You don't always think of them when you think of really good great Spanish teams, but they are definitely up there. One of the most underrated players in the past decade, in my opinion, in Parejo as well. It's an aging team. It's a fit team. It definitely needs a rebuild, and you can add to the young talent as well, but it's a really solid side to use. If you're looking to break up the top three in La Liga, finally, with Real Madrid, Barca, and Atletico stronghold on La Liga for well over a decade, I'd choose Villarreal. If you're looking for a challenge in Europe, I'd choose Villarreal. If you're looking for a long-term project of a rebuild, I'd choose Villarreal. They're a fan fantastic side to use and I couldn't recommend them more for a FIFA 22 career mode this year in La Liga but that will in today's episode of the Design for guys big thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed it. if you have then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next episode of who to sign for very soon